truly believe that in the end, the most human company will win. So the action step I would recommend is to look at every single way you interact with customers and look at it through a new lens. How can we make this more human? How can we make this friendlier? How do we make our emails friendlier, our advertising more human, our uh, responses uh, on the phone, our customer service more human? If you're using stock photos on your website or your ads, stop. Yeah. Use real people. Show your people. Show your faces. Tell your stories. And look at every single thing you're doing and how do we bring in a face? How do we bring in a smile? <laughs> how do we bring in compassion? How do we bring in love? I mean, we've got customers out there who will say, we love this company. How do we love them back? That's what people want to see. Now, now, now. now your weekly dose of inspiration. inspiration, perspiration, perspiration, and just the right amount of bull defecation. <laughs> The Get You Some Radio Show with your host, the Vice President of Making Shit Happen, Terry Lancaster. Welcome to the Get You Some Radio Show. I am Terry Lancaster, and this is the Get You Some Radio Studios. Now, everyone, everyone is promised 15 minutes of fame. I forgot he even said that, but everyone gets their own 15 minutes. And in the internet age, that has either sped up or slowed down. Everybody gets 15 minutes or everybody gets 30 or, or it, it's either longer or comes quicker and it goes by fast. But being known is easier and harder today than it's ever been. Becoming internet famous is now a thing. And today we're going to be talking to the guy who literally wrote the book on becoming known. Known, the handbook for building and unleashing your personal brand in the digital age. Today's guest is Mark Schaefer. He's written this book. He's written several other books, The Dow of Twitter. He's got a new book coming out and he can tell you how to become internet famous and why being known matters. We'll be right back with that after this. Make more friends, sell more cars. 97% of car shoppers say they would prefer to know their salesperson before they ever set foot in the dealership. People buy from people they know, like and trust, and they refer their family and friends to people they know, like and trust. Visit terrylancaster.org to learn how your sales staff can get more reviews, more referrals, and more repeat business by building better, stronger, more authentic relationships online and in real life. terrylancaster.org Mark Schaefer, welcome aboard, brother. How you doing? I couldn't be better. And the answer to your question is, Andy Warhol said that. Andy Warhol. I, I, I thought it was Andy Warhol, but I didn't want to go out on the edge and, and, and look, uh, look like I didn't know what I was talking about. But uh, that, that, that sounds about right. So, so answer, riddle me this. Is it easier or harder? Is it longer lasting or shorter lived to be known? Do you get 15 minutes? Do you get 10? How has the internet impacted your 15 minutes of fame? Well, I, I want to make a distinction between being famous and being known. That's one of the first things I address in the book. So I, I think it's important to, um, to define that. So a lot of people think about, you know, social media influencers and Kim Kardashian, uh, maybe a sports celebrity. Those people are famous. And what I'm talking about in the book and the strategy, I believe, is not really to become famous, but to become known in your industry, to have the presence, the reputation, and the authority to get your job done, right? So um, your personal brand is what people think about you. Do they think you're reliable? Do you think they think you're outgoing? Do you think they're trust, you know, do people think you're trustworthy? Do they think you're creative? Um, so people have this in their mind. That's what creates a personal brand. And what the, the, the book about is, is about is why not be mindful about that? Why not be systematic about that? Because today, Terry, having an effective personal brand is really the only sustainable competitive advantage we might have in this world. Everything else is sort of being commoditized and the internet is sort of equalizing everything and uh, you know, information is being transferred to our customers. 
And so creating a personal brand is, is very, very important. In many cases, the personal brand is the company brand. Yeah, especially for for smaller for smaller businesses and uh, and solo entrepreneurs and salespeople like like we have uh, listening and, and watching to the show, your personal brand is the brand. That's that's yeah. that's what that's what people Absolutely. think of. Mm-hmm. And so let's talk about the you, you touched on this why being known matters and and the changes that the internet has brought about the rise of influence and I've heard you talk about this and the fall of advertising. Why influence and being known your personal brand is more valuable now than maybe it used to be because of the way it, the, the information shift? Well, I saw this coming uh, really around 2009, 2010. And at that time, I wrote the first book on influence marketing called Return on Influence. And, and the, what I saw was that this power shift was occurring where the people that used to have power were the TV stations and the newspapers and the advertising agencies and the book publishers. And with the internet, Terry, we have this amazing opportunity to create our own power, our own influence, like you're doing with your show or like I'm doing with my blog or or my podcast. So when I was a young guy growing up, maybe when you were growing up in business, how would we become known? You'd have to be on TV. You'd have to be in a newspaper or something. You'd have to, you know, you'd have to be picked by somebody. Today, the beautiful thing about the internet, we can pick ourselves. We don't have to jump through those hoops. We can establish our own power, our own influence, and be known in our industry without gatekeepers. And it all starts with really thinking very carefully about what you want to be known for. And then how are you going to establish that reputation authority through some type of content? Yeah. So in, in my early days, in, uh, when I was cutting my teeth in business, my, my job was I was the gatekeeper. I sold access to, to ears. I sold radio advertising for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. That's what I did coming out of college. Mm-hmm. And I'd go, I'd, oftentimes I would go into a business and uh, their, their excuse for not buying advertising was we don't need advertising because we have word of mouth. And word of mouth is the most valuable advertising. And I kind of pishawed that forever and ever and ever and explained to them why I can reach more ears and and we can get more people in here and generate more traffic. But I think for the first time, it's possible that word of mouth now be now may be the most important, the most powerful form of advertising because uh, influence and being known in social media puts word of mouth on steroids. That is a really interesting observation. And, um, if you think about radio as an example, um, I listen to my radio in my car hours and hours and hours every week, but I never hear an ad because I'm listening to streaming, you know, like something like Spotify. Mm-hmm. I'm listening to Sirius XM, no ads. I'm listening to an audio book, no ads. Same with TV. I watch a lot of TV, but it's on Netflix or it's on Amazon Prime no ads, right? Even digital ads. One third of Americans have ad blockers on their smart devices. So even if you think you're doing digital ads. So now you combine that decline with the rise in the ability of people to be the influencers and promote a product or an idea or a service. That's, that's a really keen observation. Yeah, there's, and so you, you touched on, uh, and on the way people do this and they, uh, uh, and because it's all about content, we're, 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 you know, we're, we're absorbing content, whether we're in our car listening to the radio or we're, we're sitting at home watching TV, we're, we're absorbing content. We're, we're, we're taking information into our brain. So there's a lots of, there's lots of terms floating around that maybe people get mixed up and, and crossways in their brain because they all overlap. And one of which is content marketing, influencer marketing, personal branding, and social sales. Can you kind of line up is there a continuum on so to, you can make it understandable the difference between those four things and how they interrelate wow. okay this is a challenge i like it though <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's start at the bottom the fuel for a personal brand for social media or any sort of influence on the web is content 
Now, this is where a lot of people get sort of uh, overwhelmed. They kind of roll their eyes. I don't have time to be a blogger or whatever, but it, it doesn't have to be overwhelming. When I say content for a small business, you have four choices. You've got to write something, record something like an audio podcast like you're doing, do video, something you'd see on YouTube, or a visual content like something you'd see on Instagram or Pinterest, okay? So that's level one. It's the content. Now, social media, that's really the distribution channel for the content, right? So that's where you need to grow your audience because a lot of people today are creating um, you know, content on social media and we have to learn how to be adept at creating great content that will get seen and uh, shared. So that's kind of the social media level. Now, mm -hmm. the people who do that really well who can, are, are the ones that can move content. That's my definition of an influencer. So if you have people that you know who are trusted, they have a big audience, they share your blog post, now all of a sudden people are seeing your content or they're seeing your video or photograph. That's really what influencers are about. Now, let's take this into personal branding. So now let's say I'm a salesperson for a car agency or a, an insurance agency or something like that. What you want to do is you want to become known in your community, right? So it's really this simple. If, if you have um, someone has to make a choice about insurance and they've heard of you and they haven't heard of somebody else, you've got an advantage, right? If they trust you. Here's, here's a great example. It's one of my favorite examples, Terry. I was actually, um, I mean, I run a small business, so I'm the salesperson for my business. <laughs> I'm everything for my business, <laughs> as a matter of fact. So I was interviewing for the biggest contract of my whole career. I was going to do a consulting uh, project for the U.S. Air Force, and I had to be interviewed over Skype. So these people were at uh, the Air Force Base in Ohio. They were on one side of the table. I was at home over Skype and they were interviewing me and I started explaining why I was the most qualified person for this job. And about 90 seconds into my description, one of the, the I guess it was the director of procurement interrupted me and said, oh, Mr. Schaefer, we all know who you are. We all read your blog. Now, I didn't know they were reading my blog. I had never heard of these people before, but I knew I was going to get the business because over time they were creating some sort of emotional bond with me through my content. They trusted me. They liked how I thought they knew what I stood for. And that all happened without ever meeting any of them. So that is the power of bringing this all together. The content, the distribution through social media, yeah. growing this through influence and that's how it connects to sales so you uh one of the one of the things you mentioned in the book which is one of my favorite things to point out to someone that you're per and you the you touched touch on it just there your personal brand isn't about you it's about the emotional experience that other have others people have it's uh, your, your personal brand wasn't your blog your personal brand wasn't the thing that you thought about your personal brand was the fact that they read your blog Yes. And they knew who you were. So, I mean, and people have trouble, I think, wrapping their mind around that, especially, uh, especially salespeople. They think their personal brand, they have, to, they have to come up with something, some unique identity, some superhero, you know, so they can put a cape on and become, mm. become this thing. But it's wow. not about becoming this thing. It's about forming the connection. No, it, it, and that's one of the things. I talk to salespeople uh, a, a lot, and I say, you know, it's, it's just about being you at your best. You don't have to be anybody else. It's an extension of what you love. It's an extension of how you are. It's an extension of your passion and your caring, the things that make you good at sales. You, you know, if you, if you try to pretend and create something new, some facade, that is not sustainable and it's exhausting. <laughs> and if anybody senses that you're a fake, I mean, 
we're in the age where people can sniff out a fake in, you know, a hundred characters on a tweet, right? Oh yeah. So, I mean, I think you shouldn't be afraid to be yourself. In fact, I would encourage you to be yourself because this idea about creating content, people, you've got to peel the curtain back a little bit about what's it like to be me? What's it like to do what I do? What's it like to be in sales uh, in, in automotive? Here's what I want to know. What do you do when you're sitting there waiting for a customer? That would be really interesting. Yeah. I'd love to know that. Or, you know, something about insurance. I would love to know what's the craziest thing you ever saw on an insurance claim. Or, or how, you know, how is your company starting to get prepared for climate change? I think that's fascinating. So there's a lot of great ideas out there and you just have to sort of put your own personal story, your own, you know, your own idea, your own personality into the, into the story. There are, there are, there are kind of two, uh, two, two to three major obstacles that I, that I encounter that people, when it comes to creating content, the number, number one is I don't have the time to create more content. You, you touched on that a little, mm-hmm. little while earlier. There's, there's lots of things you can do. Um, and n- number, number two is I'm, I'm, I'm nothing special. There's, you know, I don't, I don't have a unique vantage point or, you know, there's so much information out there. I, so I guess that's the, the information overload. There's so much content. What, what do I have to contribute? Well, those, those are great points, and I hear those same questions too, Terry, and I address those you know, very forthrightly in the book, but, and also very honestly in the book. Um, if something's hard to do, I say it's hard to do in the book. If, you know, I'm not a, you know, a Pollyannish, rainbow unicorn kind of guy. I'm a very practical person, and if something's hard or something takes time, I say so, but I also think that people really underestimate their ability and overestimate what it takes to do it. So let me give you an example on both counts. Um, So um, I was recently coaching an executive and she said, you know, I I really like to write, but I, I, I don't have time to do this. I said, well, she's a very personable person. She's very articulate. I said, have you thought about doing videos? I said, instead of doing a blog, why don't you do a three minute video every week talking about some aspect of you know, what you do? I said, if you think about it, you could be at home, your husband can hold a smartphone, that's all you really need to record this. I said, you could crank out, two, if you post once a week, you could crank out two months worth of content in an hour just talking about things that are on your mind for in three minute bites. She said, well, that I could do. So it doesn't have to really be overwhelming. There's types of content that fit everybody. In terms of hasn't everything already been said, uh, again, everybody is, is unique. You have no competition. There's, there's only one you. And one of my favorite stories from the known book was this uh, young lady, I think she was maybe 19 or 20, and she was in college, and she started blogging. She wanted a career in PR and marketing. So she started a blog called How to Market to Me. And all she did was just look at advertising, look at marketing, and say, that's good, or that's bad. Now, people in the marketing profession, they wanna know what the millennials like. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so she was just talking about what she liked and what she didn't like in the advertising and marketing world. And she became a star. <laughs> she was invited to speak at conferences. She, big companies were inviting her to, you know, be on their advisory boards. Uh, she was able to get a job internships. She was able to get a job right after college. So, I mean, even somebody who's 19 or 20 has a unique perspective has a unique story. And it's just spent, one of the things I want to mention is that in my book, there are a lot of exercises to help people get through this. I'm not the type, I'm a teacher. That's what, that's, that's my heart. I'm a teacher. So I wanted to do everything I could in this book to not just let people put it down and forget about it, but to really work it and figure out how do I do this 
So there's a book. There's also a workbook that goes with the book that has some has some extra content and and gives you a place to sort of you know write down your responses and formulate a plan. So I think the the book really nails it. Uh, it's helped thousands and thousands of people, and uh, the process in there works. It absolutely does. One one of my favorite stories from the book. You you, you talked about her being nineteen or twenty, um, and but there's other people who you know are close to my age, uh, o- older folks who aren't maybe quite as comfortable with the new situation. And you talked about an entire country that wasn't comfortable putting themselves out there. There wasn't, they weren't comfortable <laughs> differentiating themselves from others. And I, and I see this a lot of people who the idea of, of sticking their head up, you know, to be somehow better or different or known just absolutely. I mean, it's so an, antithetical to everything they think of. It just, it's just, they just freeze up. So how do yeah. you, how do you, how do you get, it's not even necessarily being bashful. It's just, they find that almost distasteful. Yeah. Well, I do. I mean, really. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of an introverted person. And I don't like self-promotion. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm about the, the least optimized author and blogger you will, you will ever see. <laughs> um, I like talking to people one-on-one, like we're doing here. That, this is what I love to do, all right? I'm very comfortable doing something like this. So there, there, there is a place for everybody. And, and there's an a t- entire section of the book talking about what if you're introverted? What if you don't like self-promotion? And, I, and there's strategies in the book, even for introverted people, because there's, you know, th- this is an amazing time to grab your own influence and power in the world. And everybody has an opportunity to do it. And I'll tell you something. I kind of had a theory for a while that maybe extroverted people had an advantage in this space. And every time I would say something like that, introverts would push back and they'd say, Mm -hmm. you know what? I love communicating on social media. I love communicating on content because I'm in control. Right. I do it my way. I engage, you know, how I want to, where I want to. I can, I can maybe write comments to people but think about it first. So it doesn't have to be rah, 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 you know, look at me, look at me. I'm not that way either. Yeah. But it's a, but you, I think anybody can recognize a need for really paying attention to your reputation, your authority and your presence. That's hard to argue. Don't think of it as self-promotion. Just say, hey, I want to establish authority, presence, reputation, so people will call me instead of somebody else. Absolutely. And you touched on it it being hard work. You have have to manage your reputation. You have to grow your authority. And it's hard work. It doesn't happen overnight. My absolute favorite quote from the book was, and I'm going to get this tattooed somewhere, I think, perseverance matters more than genius. Oh, absolutely. That was one of the big learnings for me in the book. When, when, when you write a book like that, it's almost like getting a master's degree. You learn so much. And one of the things I learned, Terry, I interviewed 97 different people who are known around the world for this book. And over and over again, they just told me people give up too soon. Mm-hmm. You just, sometimes you just got to outlast your competitors. And uh, so this is a very important point in the book. When do you know that, when do you know it's working? When do you, you know, how do you know you should keep on going? How do you know it's time to pivot? How do you know it's time to quit? I put a lot of thought into that because I agree that consistency, tenacity, uh, hanging in there, that that, uh, perseverance, it's, it's more important than being a genius. It's more important than having a big idea. It's just becoming a habit in people's lives, having that presence that means something. And you, and you mentioned pivoting. That's why I, I, I discourage people from, from taking on this identity because, you know, your identity is subject to change. You can't know what, what's going to be happening in your life and in the world three years from now. The important thing is being known and, uh, and, and having the audience and having be, being a part of their life and being able to address their issues and pivot when the time gets there. You don't want to, you don't want to lock yourself into something mm-hmm. so narrow that you, you can't 
you can't work away from that. I think that's good advice, Terry. Yeah. So you've got a new, speaking of pivoting, you've got a new book coming out in, uh, in just a few months. You've, you're finishing, you finished up this one last year, it came out, and you have a new one coming out that you just literally, you know, typed, uh, typed 30 at the end of. What, uh, tell us about the new book. Well, uh, whenever I, I, I write a, a book, it's, it, I don't have a plan to write books, but I, I see a problem that I need to figure out. So for the known book that we've been talking about, the problem was, can anybody become known? I, I didn't know, and nobody knew. So I had to figure that out. Is there a process? And the answer is yes, there is. So the problem with this book is I see that everywhere I go in the world, I'm seeing that people in marketing and advertising and PR seem stuck. They say, we're falling behind, we're overwhelmed, we can't keep up, our marketing doesn't seem to be working like it used to, we really don't know what's going on. So I dove into it and my first hypothesis was that people just weren't keeping up with technology. That's partially true. But the bigger problem is that marketers have not been paying attention to the changes that are going on with our customers. Uh, they ex they, they're, they're just not responding to advertising and marketing uh, like they used to. So we talked earlier about, uh, you know, you used to be in the ad sales business and people don't see ads like they used to. And that's, so the ads aren't working like they used to. And even if we see the ads, 80% of Americans don't believe ads. And that number is even higher for young people, all right? So our traditional methods of marketing are in decline. And what's taking its place is human generated marketing, like social media conversations, content, reviews, um, influence marketing, word of mouth marketing, right? So it's people trusting people, people sharing content with people. Two thirds of our marketing is not our marketing. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. But most people are asleep. They're still doing the same thing they've been doing for the last 10 years and it doesn't work. The consumers are in control. <clears throat> the consumers are in charge of the sales funnel. They're in charge of the customer journey. And there's no way <clears throat> to buy your way in. Yeah, I think the problem with advertising is so many people were advertising 20 years ago was about getting them into that funnel, into the top of the funnel. Yeah, and, right. and they had to have, start having a conversation. But now most of the conversation where people are, because if, if people wanted to know about insurance or, or loan rates or the cost of a car, they had to reach out to a salesperson because that information wasn't readily available. Today, right. all the information in the world is readily available at your fingertips. So it doesn't do you any good to drive them to the top of that funnel to start a conversation that they don't need you for. <laughs> That's right. And so today people see marketing really as abuse. We're getting spam that we don't want. We're getting ads that we don't want. We're getting robocalls that we don't want. We're getting stuff littering our mailbox that we don't want. And so what we need to do, Terry, is really recapture what marketing was supposed to be. Um, when I was a kid in, in college, I was a journalism major. I took this marketing class. And in that first marketing class, it ignited me to want to be in marketing. And here's why. The instructor said, here's what marketing is about. It's a combination of psychology, sociology, and anthropology. Now, doesn't that sound like the coolest career in the whole world? I could dig that. Marketing is all things human. We don't think of it that way anymore. Mm -hmm. To us, it's technology, right? It's, it's our mar marketing technology stack. It's automating. It's trying to find that marketing easy button that doesn't exist. That has to be over. Those days are over. We have to get back to looking at what do our customers 
really want, right? So if an insurance company, you know, they're, they've got anxiety about protecting their assets, right? You're not selling insurance. You're selling comfort. Yeah. You're selling security somehow. What about, you know, someone in the automotive business? People have anxiety about buying a car, right? They don't want that anxiety. How can you help them overcome that? How can you help provide comfort that they're making the, the, the very best decision uh, for those people? We have to connect in a more human way. We have to look at help, help people belong. We have to help people protect their self-interests. We see companies now even reaching out, trying to help people find meaning in their lives. I mean, that's what the whole Nike Colin Kaepernick thing was about, mm -hmm. really, when you get down to it. So that's where marketing has to go. We have got to do better than, than using technology to keep spamming people and abusing people. We've got to really reimagine what marketing can be and what it should be if we're going to survive. Your humanity is your marketing superpower. Yeah, beautiful. So what's the name of the new book? It's called Marketing Rebellion, The Most Human Company Wins. It'll be out in February 2019. I'm looking forward to that. We, uh, Mark, we promise everyone if they're going to watch the show, and our audience is primarily salespeople, automotive salespeople, real estate agents, insurance salespeople, plumbing supply salespeople, but, but small, small salespeople, the backbone of America, the small, small entrepreneurs. And I promise everyone if you're going to, if you're going to spend 30 minutes of your working day watching this show, listening to this show, listening to me talk to my friends on, uh, on, on Skype here, and that you're going to walk away with one action step, one thing that you can put into action in your life, in your business today, right now, as soon as you walk away from the phone, to start making things better. So Mark, what's your one action step that a small business person, a salesperson can, can do today to become known, to become more human, to, uh, to improve their business and their life? Well, I truly believe that in the end, the most human company will win. So the action step I would recommend is to look at every single way you interact with customers and look at it through a new lens. How can we make this more human? How can we make this friendlier? How do we make our emails friendlier, our advertising more human, our uh, responses uh, on the phone, our customer service more human? If you're using stock photos on your website or your ads stop yeah use real people show your people show your faces tell your stories and look at every single thing you're doing and how do we bring in a face how do we bring in a smile <laughs> how do we bring in compassion how do we bring in love i mean we've got customers out there who will say we love this company how do we love them back that's what people want to see Mark, thank you so much. That, that, I think that is that may be the most profound advice I've heard. Uh, be more human, bring in more faces, more smiles, more love. So thank you so much for taking the time to, to speak with us today. If someone wanted to get in touch with you, find out more about what you do and how you do it, how do they get in touch? You can find everything about me, my blog, my podcast, my books at businessesgrow.com. Mark Schaefer, the author of Known, the handbook for building and unleashing your personal brand in the digital age. Mark, thank you for your time. We'll see you next time, everyone. Get you some radio. You've been listening to the Get You Some Radio Show. Subscribe today at terrylancaster.tv to hear more episodes, win valuable cash and prizes, and get free training to help you create an army of buyers who know, like, and trust you before they've ever even met you. It's a big, wide world, boys and girls. Get out there and get you some.